Hello and welcome. So today we are going to be working on this card. Index card is actually right here. And a nice little accident happened with this. Some of the item, items that we're going to be using is we actually take, I take a old in the stash, this actually started out with these flowers all around it, like this, and I seal it, and, well, you'll see. And it actually, that card is a, not really a paper, but it's actually paint chips. So these happen to be uh, glidden, and I think this one says that it's watermelon something. So those are those, and then a couple of the other items that we use, uh, the gel press, um, or the gel plate, I've got some Sky Acrylic by Amsterdam, we've got the Happy Birthday is done with um, some stamps, and yeah, let's get started. Thanks for joining me today, and as always, remember, um, please subscribe, it really helps me, I'm trying to build my channel. Um, so please, it, it's really helpful. Thank you and enjoy. Okay, so I've got a paint chip here, and this happens to be Glidden uh, Watermelon Smoothie. And I also have, this is like probably close to, I don't know, 10 years old. I was going through my stash while I was reorganizing. Um, you can see my blog post here about that. And um, I really like this print. But I never wanted to destroy it. So what I did was, not on screen, but I took some matte medium and I covered it front and back. Thinking it would kind of seal it. So now what I'm going to do, this fit perfectly on this paint chip or an index card. And I am going to put some... Uh, matte paste through it, texture paste. So let's get that lined up just like that. And I thought, oh, you know, I can use this for, oh, that's too, I can use it for the gel plate. I can use it for, you know, other things instead of liking it but not using it, you know. So I figured, well, if I seal it, I might get a lot more use out of it. Now, normally what I do after I stencil something, or not stencil it, excuse me, after I texture paste something, I put it directly into water. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to do that with this one because, you know, obviously it's still paper. I may not have gotten every single spot, so... And how I'm stenciling this, I want to make sure it gets into all those details. So I'm pushing and pulling, pushing and pulling. 
getting a real thin, thin, nice layer, even layer. And this is thick enough paper where I can do that without worrying if it's getting underneath the stencil. Plus, ooh, it may just have right there. We'll fix that. I'll show you how to fix that. So, this texture paste by Ranger, uh, the Distress, it um, it's a great consistency. It's it's thick, but it's not too thick to where it's difficult to to use. Um, it's thin enough to where I don't know. I just I love the consistency of this. So there we go. That's a nice thin layer, and I can always take and put this back in. I mean, I'd rather have more than not enough on my stencil, or on my palette knife, excuse me. So I still see a little cleanup here. And then let's do the lift, and then I'm sure I've got that spot it went under. Yep, right here. And that's okay. So now what I'm going to do, just to make sure that this is as smooth as it possibly can be, I'm just going to lift up and smooth out and make sure all this paste is kind of like flat and off. Because that's the main thing. why we make sure that um, it gets cleaned is because you don't want like here trying to relief that it'll lift up all these spots that are clogged in there I'm trying not to make a mess so let's get this other side I'll make a mess on my hands I just don't want to clean it off my desk kind of crazy thinking there but so that should be good and you know what afterwards now if it isn't exactly okay on the gel plate I mean that's what a gel plate is it's not supposed to be exact right so let me show you now how I would clean this up whatever tool you have that's thin and you can work with just kind of get in there and scrape it up. Now I can do that because there's a coating on this card, but it should pretty much, I mean, you might be left with a little bit of residue if you do it on regular paper, but it shouldn't be an issue. And we're not looking for perfection here because I definitely am not a clean cut, you know, or a, what do you, what do they call that? The clean card kind of person, but I don't know, who knows, I might end up trying just to get outside my comfort zone. So there we go. I'm going to let this dry and I will be back. It needs to air dry, it can't be heat set. Okay, so now this is all dry and I thought what I was going to do is, there's a couple spots in here that are just a little more rough than I, I want. So we can most definitely sand this down a little. Just a little bit to get it all even. Okay. This wiped down. And then Tim did a Facebook Live today and he inspired me to use the crayons. So I'm going to try a couple different things. Let's see. Okay. I've got cracked pistachio here. Let's get this. It's really casting. And I've got the water brush, and I do have the flat one. And if you didn't see Tim's um, demo of the crayons, I will do a link, and it will go right here. <laughs> um, but what, let's see. I thought the cracked pistachio would look really, really nice against this pink. I've got some water here in my tried and true wide mouth jar. And let's see. 
I want more of a wash first on the texture. Um, and it's going to work nice because this um, paint chip is, I'm going to put this piece back on, the paint chip is um, slick so I'll be able to wipe this off because it's a wash. Yeah, see it's not really sticking on there on the wash pieces. Okay, so far so good. This, I'm, I'm not doing it so wet. Give us another, you know, another dimension. Now I'm wanting this to get all down in those edges. So I'm just pushing it around. Let's go a little darker on the outside. for me. And then let's go with just a little more color do I think this should be? Let's get um, how about a nice red to counteract or I don't know this one nah, red With that green, actually, I'm getting a brown, so that's not a good idea. I don't know why I didn't think of that. That's okay. Um, let's see. Um, on sugar, that first one I grabbed, and I said no. I've got some bubblegum pink shimmer spray. I thought that was close enough. And what it's going to do is it's going to settle in all those grooves, hopefully. So let's give this a good soak. Okay, and then let's get some misting of water. And then give that, let that dry. And I'm actually going to move it onto a piece of paper towel 
because I'm also going to, I think what I'm going to do is with this index card, I'm actually going to finish it off with the background or place it on a card. So I want to show what I would do on a gel plate with this. Okay, so I've got my 8x10 gel plate played out, but I wanted to show you what this was looking like as it's drying. This uh, cracked pistachio actually is almost turning like a sky blue. So what I'm going to do is get a layer of sky blue, and this is Amsterdam my favorite favorite paint on a gel plate because it just I don't know it just works I don't know it usually always pulls up all those the you know little bits it's in bits on there and it just it's really a great paint for the gel plate so I've got a nice thin layer on here and over here I've got a clean off sheet and this is the 65 Nina and I'm going to go right, uh, you know, let's kind of try to center it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this down. So then that way I know exactly where to place it when I do this other stuff. And the rubbing is actually very important. It's the warmth of the hands that get all that paint to, to stick to the paper. It's kind of a nice pressure. Um, you know, I'm not giving CPR but I'm not just doing like the chills either it's a it's a real nice in between let me get that glare out of there really nice in between pressure you can even kind of feel some air bubbles in there sometimes like I just did and let's see yeah that's nice and see I like when there's a little bit left on there to me it just adds a little extra okay so now let me trim this and I'll be right back okay so let's get going I ended up doing the other side this is all trimmed down and the closest color I have in distress I think is picked raspberry this is regular and this is oxide so what I'm going to do I want a real soft flower on here so I'm going to ink up sorry about the color of my gel plate it yellow stains it so and you know what it doesn't affect anything with it so I don't even worry about it so there we go doesn't look like there's anything on there but let me tell you there is I'll lay this down and what this is going to do is lift up where the paper is contacting so and I can see that it worked and look at all that on there so I'm going to line this up right to the edges and then pull this and now you make sure that this goes into the water and then I usually have a paper towel let me grab one that I end up just running this on just to make sure that ink isn't on there because it's real easy to forget what's on that roller and then you can have a big mess There. there we go that's what I was looking for so there's that okay which will look real nice this is dry now and I don't know if you can see that shimmer let's see oh yeah there it is I think that's gonna look really nice that could look beautiful on a card um, okay let's do I also wanted to show what let's get this off there's still a lot on there you'd never guess it 
Okay. Now on this side, let me make sure this is dry. We're going to do the reverse effect. So if I take and I put, now you got to remember, I can do this because I put that gel medium on here. So I want the Ranger, the difference for Brayers for me is this one's really like jumpy. This is a real nice one if you want like thicker paint um, and or like you know you want a nice border. The speed balls here, I've got both of them, they're really smooth. So like when you when you brayer this out, it's all so smooth that it gives a really nice thin um, even um, layer so there is a bit of a difference this I want a little thicker because it's gonna this is going on top of it so I don't want a really really thin one I want some of the paint to remain when I lift it so see that's a bit thicker okay put that aside for a sec let's get this laid down and we will go I'm trying to look to see okay so we kind of did this side with the texture paste actually that could look kind of cool so let's lay this down okay and then now I am going to clean this brayer off and I'm going to actually clean it on my small my 5 by 7 here just so it's never wasted okay so now I want to lightly get this pressed down okay and then me running my brayer across here is actually lifting the paint in between you could do a ghost print and actually I will but you'll see it's lifting some of the paint too so this goes or this first pull I'm actually going to go on a separate piece of paper Actually, I have a scrap one right here that I used to clean off. And I want to make sure. Now, the 65-pound weight is a little thick to be trying to get into all that detail on that, um, uh, that cutout. So, uh, let's see how much it lifts. I might need to use an actual piece of paper, which I also have sitting there and see yeah this didn't lift up very much so it's just too thick to get in there for this one so this is just a scrap piece of paper yeah see and it's a copy paper so this is a lot thinner it's going to get into all those grooves see all that but I don't want to take too long because I don't want this paper this um, cut out to end up sticking to the plate. So let's lift this up and do the other side here. Oh, how did that happen? Oh, that's all right. So let's get this side. couple more minutes oh look at how distressed and beautiful that is so that's a completely different look so I don't know I'll have to decide if I want this one or if I want this one Okay, so I've decided I ended up removing the flowers because I'm like, you know, I got to stop hoarding stuff. I got a couple prints. I had fun with it, so it just needed that edging. So, one, first I'm going to just, because that's ink, I'm just going to do a little splat. This is just water. Let's 
see where it came out. Give it a second just to react. Looks like maybe I need some more here. <clears throat> I don't want it to be too bold, so I'm going to lift maybe a little more. It should be good. Up here. Okay, and now let's lift. That's good. Okay, let's give it a quick dry. This Nina doesn't seem to like the water very much. Huh. Didn't know that. Okay, so let's just move on. So I did like this here, but I want, oops, like this, but I want to draw out the tension of um, the flowers a little bit, so we're going to paint it. And actually, let's get this down first so it can dry a little bit, and then I will show you what I'm going to do to it. So this is a very intricate, obviously, so I'm just going to go around and give a quick dollop on all these little inner flowers. I want the, to paint it. So I'm just going to take my dry brush here, dry brush, Vicki Booten 6, my blue, just grab a little bit of this and then just, oh, I got a hair. There. And then just go around and just lightly. Highlight this area and then run your finger. I just want it to add a little bit of lightness for the contrast. Use whatever brush you, you'd like. This isn't doing anything special for it. <clears throat> it's getting late. Getting tired. Anyway, yeah, this really isn't... It can be any brush you like. This isn't a specialty brush that's doing something on here. Okay, and then I'm also going to for the tag. This happy birthday is double. And then this I just um, inked it with the stamps from, I think this is a, um, what is it, Letter It? The uh, sentiments. Just got happy birthday, cheers, stuff like that. So I did the happy birthday in Versamark. Used um, Lindy's Poppin' Pink. And then I went around and edged with the Versamark First a marker like this and then just did a little dot and that's that and this I decided was going to go right here so, so far so good and then I've got the card and then I did all the took all the double-sided tape off except for this middle one just to save time. I know my videos have been long. And then I went with a real small edge on it. Like 
like so. So that helps with the paper, with it being crumply or whatever you want to call it. And so now what I'm going to do for the inner circles here, I've got a, this is just an embossing, um, or not an embossing, yeah, an embossing if you wanted to manually do it. And then I'm going to take a, my little stamp, there we can use this one. I've got the same color here. Just going to put a little bit out. I can always add to it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around and dot. And it's all about the details, you know. So then there we go. So then there you have it. The pictures will be next and we'll show you just how great this is.